Hi, welcome to Mathematics with Tom. I am Tom, and today we're going to take a look at applications of the normal distribution with some mean and some standard deviation, and where we cannot use the empirical rule to find the areas under the curve. So let's return to our example of the average American male. The average American male has a height, height, height of, let's see, of 70 inches. We said that that was 5 feet 10 of 70 inches with a standard deviation. I'm just going to write sigma with a standard deviation sigma of 4 inches. Now, let's use that information to complete our normal distribution here. Now remember, the horizontal axis for this, this is our x values. These are x values. And so let's see, we start, our mean is always in the middle, that's 70, okay? And then, um, then let's go to the left. So that means if I go one standard deviation, I take 70, I subtract four, that's 66. To go two standard deviations, I subtract another four for 62. And to go three standard deviations, I would subtract another four to get to 56. And then let's go back to the mean of 70. And again, add four, that's our standard deviation, so that would be 74. Add 74 again, or add four to 74, and we would get 78. And one more time would give us 82. Now, we kind of know this in a way, but but I'm gonna I need to get a little space here because I'm gonna move this. Oh no, that's not at all. I wanted that tool. What I want to do here is I need to move this down just a little bit there. Now, let's let's ask a question. So I wrote I wrote these are my data values up here. Well, what is the z-score that corresponds with some of these? For example, the z-score of 70, well, that's the mean, so we would expect the z-score of 70 to be 0. Likewise, we know that 74 is in the first position, so that should have a standard deviation of 1. 78, that's two standard deviations, so it should have a z-score of 2, and 83 Three. And likewise, in the other direction, that 66 would have a standard deviation, or I'm sorry, is, Z, is 66 is one standard deviation below 70, so it would have a standard deviation of minus one. 62 is two standard deviations below the mean, so that should have a z-score of minus two. And 56 would be minus three. So the question then is, why do I need those, and how could I get those? For example, what if... What if I had a z-score or a data value right between 70 and 74? Well, let's put one in there. This is going to be a, a good problem. So what if I called it 72? Well, oops, that didn't look, that didn't come out. That's a funny looking two. Well, my concern is, is that I would expect a z-score to be one half, but I'm not sure because remember, we couldn't just divide the area in half or something like that. So can we do that with z-scores? Let me show you how we go from the data value to a z-score. The formula looks like this. So if I wanted the z-score of, let's try like 74. So the z-score of 74, and this whole piece is just read the z-score of 74. And I, the reason we, we write it that way is because that way you can keep track. Like it's in this example, we, we might calculate more than one z-score, and if all we have is just z equals something, we know we won't be able to connect it to where we began. So z for 74, here's what we do. We say, all right, how far was the z-score, or was the data value from the mean? Well, 74 minus 70, that's its distance from the mean, 
then we divide it by the number of standard deviation, or by the standard deviation itself, that's four. Well, 74 minus 70 is four. Four divided by four, that's one. So look at that. Those correspond like we expected. Wait a minute, so the general formula then, the general formula looks like this. So the z-score for any data value x is equal to x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation, okay? So let's try, let's check for a couple more, right? Let's check at 66, oh, 66 should have a, z, a negative z-score, let's check. Let's find the z-score for 66. Well, the z-score is 60, the x-value is 66, the mean is still 70, and we divide that by our standard deviation, which is four. Well, 66 minus 70 is minus four over four, but that's minus one, so that's working. Here's something that I see people get a little nervous about, and that is, is that you have to keep in mind that area under the curve is always positive, but z-scores can be positive or negative. And since this data value is to the left of or below the mean, it should have a negative z-score. And the formula uh, indicates that as we would have hoped. So let's check our 72. Is our intuition correct or is there another curveball? Let's check. So let's find the z-score for 72. Okay, so we take 72. We subtract the mean of 70. We divide this by four. 72 minus 70 is two over four, which is in fact one half. Or if you like decimal, 0 0.5. So if I asked you a question like this, um, let's see, how. oh, how about this? What percent, or what proportion, I like that. What proportion, what proportion of males um, are below are below 72 inches which is six feet tall well what we would do is we would we'd shade first let's shade a little area here and the area that we're looking at is 72 so now we just use the normal distribution just like we would expect and we just shade it in so we're looking for this shaded region right there okay so we want now now notice that if you look at that we want everything to the left of 72 which is exactly the way it's exactly the way our tables would be presenting that information. So because of that, um, because of that, we can just look at our use our tables directly, and let's do that. So we have a z-score of 0 0.5. So, so notice in your table, you're going to look up z. Here's a. It starts out at 0, 0.0, and then if you go down, you'll find a 0 0.5. Go down that column to 0 0.5, and then you're going to go right down to the first column of 0 0.00. And where these two columns meet, that's our answer. So I'm looking it up. I come up with 0.6915. And a quick intuition check is, is that if the, answer, the question was the probability of 70 or below, well, 70 is the mean, which is in the middle. So that 70 would automatically be half. Our answer is obviously a little bit bigger than a half, so it looks like I'm probably on the right track. That would be the intuition that you would check. And so we could, we could write our answer is then the probability that x, now the x was 72, that x is greater than 70, oh, not larger, I'm sorry, smaller, that x is less than, less than 72, we would say is 0 0.6915. Okay, now let's turn this problem around completely, completely turn this around. And here's how I want to do this. What I want to do, 
is we need a good application. We need a difficult application. Now, let's talk about just an interesting application. So I got this question uh, after talking to my brother-in-law, who was a college basketball coach. And when they're recruiting, one of the most interesting things is they want to look at the parents. How tall are the kids' folks? If the kids' folks aren't tall, then there's probably not a very good chance that the kid's going to be tall. And, well, basketball players, it helps to be tall. So if you're a basketball coach, you need to know, you need to know about the height of basketball players. So let's do this. Um, hmm, let me see. Okay. Boy, let me get my uh, yeah okay sorry I had to check to make sure I'm on the, the right one here so I'm gonna just copy my normal distribution because I'm gonna need it we're gonna go to a new page Here we go. I think we're ready. So here's the problem. It says, uh, a basketball coach, suppose, imagine, suppose, I'm going to use white for this. So suppose a college basketball coach is recruiting is recruiting um, and knows height is a is the primary predictor primary predictor of success so the coach only recruits only recruits players in the top the top 10% 10% by height okay find find the minimum height the minimum minimum oops minimum height to be considered, to be considered for recruiting. All right, well, where is the top 10%? Well, I don't really know. I don't, I don't, I just don't know. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a few things. First off, let's erase some of these numbers. They're just gonna get in the way for a little bit. And let's erase some of those little tick marks there. So we're going to just use kind of a, we need a general picture, so I'm going to fix that. Okay, now we don't need the 56, but I'm going to keep the 70 so we remember where our roots came from. So what we want to do is we're going to find, we just want this top 10%, that's not a very different color. Is it? We just want this top 10% of, of by height. So I don't really know if that's exactly where the top 10% is in my picture, but that's okay. We, it helps us to visually keep track. We just need a good estimate. So now the question then is this. We want height. We want what's the height of the player. But in order to get the height, first off, we have to figure out, we have to find the z-score that gives me the top 10%. Okay? So we have to figure out this. So what we're trying to do 
is, is look, we're trying to find that the probability that x is going to be greater than some value is going to give me 10%. That's what we're looking for. So we're really doing a problem in reverse. Well, it's not, we can't start with the data value. What we have to do is we have to come down and we have to start with our z-score. We have to start with a z-score. And you're going to need a table of z-scores to complete this. So I'm going to, but I'm going to sketch out a little bit of what it would look like. So if I, what you do, now this isn't even easy already because look at what we've got to do. Look at what we have to do just to get this problem off the ground. Well, in your table of z-scores, the shaded region isn't, isn't from your cutoff to the right. It's always from the cutoff to the left. In other words, you're going to be looking up this region here, this pink region, so that we can find the cutoff for the blue region. Well, if, if the blue region is 10% or 0.1, then the pink region is going to be 1 minus 0.1, because the whole region is 1. So, so I subtract that. So I need to find 0 0.9 or 0, 0, 0 in my table. Now, if you have your table handy, I would t encourage you to take a look because you're going to find right off the bat we come up with a dilemma. Here's the dilemma. The dilemma is if you look into your table, and I'm going to copy this down here for you, you're going to find out, you're going to find a point, 8, 9, 9, 7. And then right after that, you'll see a point, 9, 0, 1, 5. Okay, now, if, if you go back to the left, you're going to see 1.2, okay? And then remember, this is a table. Now, we're look, we're, this is different because normally we started with a z-score and found the area. Now we're starting with the area and going back to the z-scores. Well, if you look up, if you look up above from 0 0.9015, you'll see you're in the point. 0, 9 column. And if you look up from point 0.8997, you're in the point 0, 0.08 column. Now, if this coach is really adamant about it has to be in the top 10%, well, if he used a value of 0.8997, then technically he's taking people that slide slightly below the top 10%. So this coach really, just to, for the sake of our mathematical construct and being, maybe he's just a really hard nosed, he's going to take people that qualify at 0 0.9015. Well, look at what that means. That means, that means that the z-score is 1.29, okay. So now I can write that over here. So z is 1.29. Okay, and uh, that's kind of blending with my writing. I'm gonna pull a box around it here. Okay, now, but the problem, the problem wasn't about the z-score, remember? The problem was about that x value right above, like how tall do I have to be to be recruited? Well, it's time for, it's time for some algebra. We're going to do some algebra. And here's what I mean. Look at this. If I have the z-score, remember that, um, let's use white again. So the z-score for some x value, remember we said it's x minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. Well, let's just start with that and let's see what we have. So the z-score for our x we know is 1.29. So I have 1.29 equals x, well, we're going to find that, minus the mean, the mean is 70, over the standard deviation, which is 4. Now, this is not a class in algebra, but I'm going to just give you enough to finish this. And the basic rule of algebra, if there's one rule that just rises above them all. It's like you, it is you can do any mathematical operation that you would like, provided that you always do it to both sides of the equation. So I'm going to use a maybe this bright orange color here to annotate my changes. The first thing I'm going to do is get rid of my fractions. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 4. OK. 
okay? So then on the, on the right, these fours would cancel. So now I'm left with this problem of one, I'm gonna write it this way, 1.29 times the four is equal to x minus 70. Okay, now remember, if we do it to one side, we can do it the other side. So I'm going to add 70 to the right, which means I have to add 70 to the left. So there it is. The seven, minus 70 plus 70, those cancel. And so there's my answer. My answer is that 70, oops. My answer is that 70 plus 1.29 times 4 equals x. And if I had a calculator, well, let's just try this. Look, um, this is going to be equal 70 plus, oh, I don't have my calculator handy. Well, 4 times 1 is going to be 4 plus 4 times 0.2 is going to be 0.8 plus 4 times 0 0.09 is going to be 0.36. Add all those together, 74, 75, oh my gosh, 75 point, ooh, I just lost it, 1.6. I think it is, I think the score is 75.16. Let's see, uh, I have this somewhere, let me check, find a calculator. Uh, I think that's it. I'm going to run with that. So now look at what we've done. We have taken a normal distribution. We've applied it to a normally distributed data set. In this case, the height of American males. We have used that. We've converted the data into a z-score. We've used the z-score then to access the z-table, the, z, the table of z-scores, to find areas. And that gave us the probability. Then we turned the problem around by by saying, okay, well, what if I know the percentage or the probability? Can I find the data value that corresponds to it? And the answer is I can. And I do that by finding the, by shading my, by shading my normal distribution, by finding the appropriate z-scores, and then by use, by doing a little bit of algebra with the formula for a z-score. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.